So, um, like I do. so what, what I'm trying to say is, uh, we didn't start this one, right? Estimation. We didn't, we didn't touch on this, right? Still not? Huh. Good. So we haven't covered this last time, right? Last time we covered is uh, combo sample interspecies. Okay. Okay. So the goal of today is to a little bit ambitious. We'll finish this whole thing. Okay. Uh, it's not a little bit ambitious, but not too expand too ambitious because uh, you later see uh, it's very highly related to what we have done. So um, just a, some a mean thing, uh, probably I'll announce in the Blackboard in more detail as well. Uh, so probably, you know, next Thursday, next, but not this, but next Thursday, we don't have class because of the uh, conflagration. So there's no class for everyone. Um, and, uh, and then, and, it is okay, we don't need to make up because we will have uh, 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 three hours uh, additional tutorial lecture on our studio or our programming. So we need to reschedule one more class as well because it's a three hour class. So I can't ask you to attend more than you should. Uh, so I would also uh, reschedule the next Monday one as well. So next Monday and next Thursday, uh, we have no class that will be rescheduled uh, to I think it's the last week. Uh, we will have a three hour lecture in the lab again, uh, but that will be our studio uh, instead of Py instead of uh, Python. Okay. Um, then also give you the idea how to do Python, but uh, I, I, I'll upload the slides later, but uh, these are, will be advanced uh, later in the lab board, So you don't have to worry about that, but just let you know that would be uh, some, uh, some changes. But don't worry, I mean, I think we'll cover everything. That's no problem. Definitely, there would be no issue of covering everything we want to cover. So um, you just say very quickly, we view what we have done. Uh, just make sure that we have done in the uh, uh, sampling distribution. Why so close? Just, yeah, that's good. Sampling distribution, okay. The idea, Oh, they change. Okay, they change the new monitor. That's why. Before it's very blurry, but they change the new one. So, um, just to very quickly review what we have done. Uh, last 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 week. Okay, I guess it's uh, last Thursday. So, uh, it's about how to use data to uh, make analysis, and the idea is that the sample is that the data we collect, right? And the population is something we want to study. And we're never able to collect everything, right? That's why sample is always smaller than population. And what we got is we don't know in advance what are they, okay? So uh, that means that uh, probability have to be there because we don't know where, what kind, uh, who is going to be in our sample, okay? And we focus on the simplest case we call simple random sample where uh, each one is equal likely to be chosen, okay? And in the, they're independent, okay? So the independent is why we learn topic two, right? Independent, right? The probability of A and B, if they're independent, it's just A times B, right? And the identical, right? So that means that uh, everything is the same, okay? And uh, the uh, thing we want to formalize is called statistics, okay? And the idea of statistics is uh, the main thing is is a random variable. Okay, is is uh like uh, uh it's a random variable, random variable, right? Because random variable is uh, all the data you got, right? Is is some function of the random variable. Okay, and uh, the way we do is sample mean sample variance. Okay, uh, and there are many others, but. These two are the most simple one. And you do remember why we care about simple mean and variance. Uh, later you will see as we do today is 
the sample mean and sample variance is the way that we want to know the population mean and population variance. And they are good way to guess the mu and sigma, okay, sigma squared. So you will be more clear later today, we talk about why we talk about statistics. And in the last class, we focused on sample mean because they, is, they are the most important one. And sample mean has a nice property of what we call the unbiasedness. Later you will see is the expected value of the sample mean is the population mean. So the idea we will detail more later uh, is that if we do one sample, two sample, three sample, four sample, five sample, many, many sample, each sample will have the own sample mean and average of these sample mean will give you the population mean. Okay, the idea is like if you have a science lab right around the world, you aggregate the information from each lab, you get what we want. Okay, and that is called unbiasedness, which we will uh, define formally today. But the important part is that we only do one. Okay, we're not going to do that many. Okay. But at least what we do will give us some idea that this would be right if we're able to repeat ourselves. Okay, so that is the idea. Not, not saying that we do many of the sample, we got many sample mean, right? But rather, if we are thinking is if this procedure to be repeated many times, okay, that will be a good one. Okay, that is the idea. Remember, we just only do one sample. Okay, we're not going to do many, many samples. That, but anyway, this is... Uh, the idea behind. Uh, the other idea is uh, look at the variance of the sample mean, right? Because uh, that's the thing you care about a random variable, the mean, the variance, and the distribution, okay? And the variance turned out to be, uh, not surprisingly, it's sigma square over n, right? If the original data is has high variance, high sigma, then uh, the sample mean would also be have high variance, right? And you can see it's inversely proportional to n. The idea is that if you have sample size very large, uh, things likely to be canceled out, right? You are able to get a high number, no number, right? If that were unlikely, but that would be canceled out somehow, right? Averaging out the extreme values. And uh, the last thing is about when sample size get larger, right? Um, and turns out that the variance will go to zero, right? And that is called law of large number, right? When the sample size is very large, then essentially it becomes zero. And uh, the next one is called central linear theorem. It essentially said this one, right? It's just like the sample mean will be normally approximate. It can be, I say, uh, it's following normal distribution when n is more than 35, right? That is the standard rule that we apply. And, um, and we talk about binary data, that will be the same, right? The only main difference of uh, the binary data is, uh, uh, is the variance, right? And the mean are closely related, okay? This is pi and pi times one pi. And later you will see uh, that uh, allow us to do more stuff, okay? Later you will see this is a, uh, a very convenient thing, uh, but uh, do note that uh, when this thing applies, n pi and n times one pi is more than five. So that would be the thing you need to remember. And lastly, we cover this, um, the case where we don't know sigma. If we know sigma, this thing follows central limit theorem. That's no problem, it's a bell shape, okay? That's no problem. The sample mean for the bell shape, we can do whatever we need to do. Uh, the problem is we don't know sigma square in gen generic case. Okay. Of course, uh, we can come up with the upper bound of the sample variance, right? Uh, by range, we can estimate, right? We can see how big the number is and how small the number is. We can guess, uh, we can put upper bound on the sigma. But uh, in general, the way we do is to use S square with the sample variance. And the question is, if you do sample variance, how does this look like? And this guy, in general, we don't know, I have no idea. 
unless the underlying x is follow a normal distribution, okay? underlines a bell, then we can say this follow a t distribution. Okay? And I would, to, would like, I, would to, I would like to remind you that uh, the t distribution are uh, only one. Right? Normal bell only have one set normal, but the t distribution actually have uh, n different word, different version depend on sample size. Okay, uh, you would check the n minus one version. And uh, why we do n minus one, but just the way that uh, we have our t table, okay? Uh, uh, we can we can do it called we can call it n, but uh, this is how uh, all the textbook is using. So we're not going to against the world. Uh, so let's use that t is equal to n minus one. Okay, so this is uh, I think what we covered last time. So uh, I guess we can. Uh, now continue our journey as estimation, okay? So I think we have enough review, okay? So the question now we are looking at is uh, estimation, okay? Estimation, I think is one of the uh, most important thing you want to know uh, from this class as well, is uh, you get a data, right? The data would uh, try to guess what happened in the population, right? That's something we want, right? Suppose uh, you are working for Elon Musk who is thinking to introduce a, his new smartphone X phone that connect to the satellite, right? And the question probably you would want to know is uh, how much people win to pay, right? And suppose they, he want to sell to China, right? One of the biggest market, we have 1.4 billion people. But there's no way you can ask one from four billion people how much you're going to pay, right? If they can, then right, that would be too costly in terms of time and money. So what happened is you would have to is to ask some of the people, hope their group is representative, how much they want to pay is going to be helpful, right? And you ask one from four billion people how much you're going to pay, then you probably even if you get it, you will become a complicated object, right? Suppose you ask one million people, right? The 1 million people how much you want to pay is, you can draw a histogram, right? But uh, usually you would interested from topic one, you know, we have complex data. We don't know two things, right? One is the average, the mean, right? Is the most, is the number one thing you want to know from that, right? To summarize the data is the mean. The second thing you want to know is variance, right? How accurate the mean is, how spread it is, the two things. So the estimation we talk about today is to try to tell you using the data to estimate mean and variance and what is the good way to estimate. Okay, so that is the main goal. Okay, and as application, right, you want to tell Elon Musk, right, who hire you to do a survey, right, he, you would give him first thing, okay, how much Chinese people, 1.4 billion, going to pay, right, and how is the, how big is the variance. Right? And of course, if you assume the bell curve, then probably you know everything, right? If you are underlying the bell curve, right? Because you assume China is so big, a central limit applies, right? The bell curve are P apply well, then you can have the, have the rule, right? 68% uh, within one SD, right? 95% uh, between two SD and 99 between uh, three SD, right? They can fit the model very easily, right? Then you can tell him what's up with the pricing, so on and so forth, okay? So getting the mean and variance is the first importance, right? If you are going to handle this kind of question. Okay. So that is called the mean and variance is example of what we call the population parameter, right? Is the property parameter something we care, right? As we said, is he care from topic one, everything we learn topic one is important, right? The mean, the variance, of course you ask, okay, what about ketosis? What about skewness? Okay, actually, I did give you how to do them in the topic one already, but uh, we will we'll, we'll see later. Okay, and in terms of notation, we will call the thing we care the population is called theta. Theta can be anything, can be mean, mu, or uh, variance sigma square. Okay, so that's the first terminology we have today is parameter. Okay, do not that parameter, there's no uncertainty. Okay, how much. 
people in China, 1.4 billion to pay? It's a number, we don't know it. There's no uncertainty there. You just don't know, okay? So you have to distinguish things that we don't know and the thing that's probabilistic, okay? Is that clear? So have to be clear that uh, you collect a sample, which one you pick, kernel is a random variable, okay? Although we don't know before you do it, right? This, but you can describe it, okay? But this parameter, you can't really describe it right? because you don't know, okay? But there's no probability there, right? So it's not about probability, there's no random variable. It's a number we just don't know. We want to guess it, okay? The only randomness come from your sample, not from this variable, not from this uh, variable. So that's why it's not random variable, it's a parameter, okay? So what is random variable here uh, is your, is our guess, right? It's our data we got, okay? And the way that we define, okay, the statistics is called estimator. Estimator, is simply the statistics to estimate parameter. I hope you still remember what statistics. Statistics is a function of random variable, right? Your random variable, okay? How you give the random variable, you convert the random variable to another number, which is a random variable, okay? Sample mean is a example of estimator, right? Sample mean is the average of what you observe divided by total number observation. And what you observe is a random variable. You don't really know before you work on it, okay? So estimator, right, is to estimate parameter. So you will see from definition, this is extra to estimate parameter, right? You compare this to the, what we call statistics, right? It is the first few word is called statistics, right? If you look at this, look at the notes, right? If you still remember, this is statistics. And the statistics to estimate the parameter is called estimator. Estimate is a function as a rule, okay? Give me the, uh, it's a mapping, it's a function from, uh, from, a, from the random variable, sorry, from a random sample to a number which to estimate, okay? And usually it depends on n. So that's why we will call the theta hat n, okay? Hat is means the thing we guess, okay? N is to denote that is estimate, okay? Sometimes we omit the n, but Head is always the thing we try to guess, okay? Theta is not random variable, but theta head is a random variable, okay? So let's be very clear. Theta is not random variable. Theta head is a random variable because it depends on the sample you guess, okay? Theta, we just don't know, but it's not random variable, okay? Have to be very clear about this point. Is that okay? Now, once it's done, we will define a term called estimate, okay? Estimate is the thing that is, there's no random, it's not random variable. It's a data. You once have a data, you apply your rule of estimator to calculate, right? And suppose you, your data is sample mean, right? And you ask one person, he's willing to pay $10,000 for the X phone. The other guy is willing to pay 20,000. The other guy to pay 30,000, right? And you calculate the average of this is 20,000, right? Once you get data, right? The number, no more random variable. And based on the estimator, you come up with estimate with 20,000, right? This number is no longer random variable. It's estimate, it's a number, okay? So that's why to, to distinguish estimate and estimator, Estimates is the number that you actually got from your data by applying the rule, right? You get a data, apply the estimator, you got the estimate, okay? Uh, the reason that I have to be very careful because uh, uh, textbook is very picky about this, so I want to be a little bit careful here. It's not saying that I'm going to ask you in the exam how to distinguish this two, no, but uh, I'm trying to make sure that you understand what's going on. I mean, a lot of the principle I'm asking is just uh, definition try to give you is make you feel more uh, comfortable when you read the book, okay? And what I'm expecting you to know is, you know how to operationalize this, right? Especially the green example, the green box example, uh, you should be very careful, okay? And uh, 
So here is an two important distinction of the type of estimator we would care, okay? And the first one, I think is very easy to think. Estimator, you try to guess the mean of the average of the population. How you guess a number, right? So you can imagine it's very simple, right? I try to hit something, okay? What I do is use a laser gun or a pistol, bum, hit at one point, okay? And where I hit is what I guess, the point estimator, okay? I guess one thing, that's only my only guess, okay? And interval estimator is not hitting one point, okay? Instead of hitting one point, I have an error attack. I am going to use a bomb, a grenade to hit the area, okay? The area I attack include what I want to guess, okay? So to give you an example that you would often see uh, when you watch the financial uh, interviews, right? Usually you wake up or you take the subway, probably you also see, right? And there's a anchor who try to ask a so-called expert to guess, okay, what do you expect the Hensen index today, okay? And if the expert said, I expect the Hensen index today will be um, 16,552, okay? If he say so, this is a point estimate, okay? He give you a single point that represent his guess, okay? And that normal, sometimes people give very precise one, that's fine, I mean, that is good. Although unlikely that you think he is going to make it, but anyway, he give a point, he think the best one for him, and that is the closest as he can get, fine. But what more often you would see is not like this, right? He would say, uh, okay, today's uh, Hansen index is between uh, 16,000 um, to 18,000, right? There's some resistance level in 16,000, but I don't think it go over 18,000, okay? So basically what he said is, he's guessing is 16,000, 18,000, okay? Anything in between is, I didn't give any probability, but likely he mean uniform or normal or whatever, but anyway, he gave up a bang, low bang, okay? He gave a range, okay? He just give an atomic bomb to bomb the whole area, whatever is there is there. Okay, and if you give an area, area attack, then it's interval estimate. You give one point, it's point estimate. Is that clear? So that is two things, and then we will talk about two different things. Before the break, we'll talk about point estimate. Uh, we'll talk about the, after the break, after talk, so talk about uh, interval estimate, okay? Point estimate is very simple, right? Just basically you give one, right? And interval have to give more than one, okay? And you, you will see interval estimate usually based on point estimate, okay? Your point estimate, you go left and right, okay? You add some margin of error, symmetric margin of error, add and subtract. But we will talk about this later. Is that clear what we're going to do? So we will we'll talk about how to do estimate based on data. The two type estimate, point estimator and interval estimator. Point estimator give you one point. Interval estimator give you one interval. Okay, do remember that these estimator are random variable before you do. Once you do, they call estimate. Okay, before you do it, it's estimator. Okay, I hope it's clear. Although I see many of you feel very tired already, uh, I can understand after midterm when also we pass through the almost two thirds of the semester, two thirds of the semester, uh, un understandably you're tired. Okay. Uh, your right to do so, but uh, hopefully you can still learn something from today's class. And uh, after today's class, I will, I will release the assignment uh, for the new one, okay? Again, you have two weeks to do it, so don't worry about that. Uh, and uh, we talk about uh, several property of good estimator, okay? Because that will form the basis of the good interval estimator as well. But these are the three good point estimator properties. and it's very visual, so it's not difficult to understand. So that the graph will really help a lot. So the first one is unbiasedness. That is something that uh, we have seen already. This is called the average of the sample mean is the population mean, right? And 
Beside that, we'll talk about sample variance. Sample variance, the expected value of sample variance is equal to population variance, okay? And that explains why we emphasize in topic one, we divide by n minus one, not n, because there was n minus one is the correct guess. That means that if I have many, many sample, suppose I do, but you only do one, but suppose I do many sample, each sample, I calculate sample variance, okay? I use the n minus one version, okay? And these, I collect so many sample variance, I average of those will give me the population variance, okay? But if I use n divided by n, I get the wrong one. I have to use n minus one. So that's why with n minus one, okay? Because why this is important, it means on average, hit the target, right? Graphically, it means like this. Okay, if I have, we want to hit the bull eye for this target, right? If the estimator actually give us, in some case, give you this guy, in other case, give you this guy, or another case, this guy, although it is not hitting the target, but on average, it's hitting the target, okay? So this is minimum requirement, right? Because it's not asking that, it's going to hit there, but it's saying that suppose we are allow us to repeat this process many times, an average of those is hidden target, right? So an bias is, uh, some people would say is the minimum requirement, okay? Because it doesn't satisfy, there's no hope of getting the truth, right? Because we expect just like the science we do, right? And lab number one in Hong Kong do this, lab number two in China do that, lab number three in US do that, right? and leverage those out, aggregating the wisdom of the crowd, we should get what we want. Otherwise, if you do something is not there, then no hope to get what we want, okay? So that's why unbiased is important, okay? And uh, do note that this unbiased, okay, is for estimation, okay? And although we don't cover in this class, uh, when we do prediction, this is not very essential for protection. You want to protect the future. And that is later you, well, we don't learn, but you will talk, you, you, when you learn other class, they talk machine learning, okay? And machine learning actually allow us to have some trade-off uh, between, they allow some bias, a predictor, okay? If they predict better, okay? And actually most of the thing you see from the AI or the thing is, they, many of them actually use biased predictor, okay? And the reason is because uh, they, they don't care underlying parameter to get, but they want to predict better, okay? But uh, for our purpose, when we do estimate, uh, then we want it to be unbiased, okay? But anyway, uh, unbiased is very important. Uh, so that's, we keep it. And um, the next is, Build on the unbiased, okay? So given two unbiased estimator, we will say A is efficient than B if A have smaller variance, okay? Given that on average of heating, we want it to be more accurate, means that smaller variance. So graphically, it's very simple. A and B are on average heating target feeder, right? And A, is closer to the target than B, right? So we want it to hit the target on average, and we also want closer to the target, right? So A is more efficient, it's the closer, okay? Later, we will justify why efficient is important because sample mean is an efficient estimator, okay? We will talk about that very soon. Uh, maybe it's just taught now before we go. So this is sample mean, probably we know it already. So what, why is good? Um, so we already know uh, it's unbiased, that's we have did talk about the last class, okay? So, and second one is, uh, we, we use it that often, it's also, it's called, it's an efficient estimator, okay? Uh, I don't do the proof, you can check it out, but this is just simple proof. And why we don't want to do weighted other weighting, right? Why we give equal weight to everyone, right? You can imagine that 
you have a sample. Okay, you have observation. You have one 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 five one hundred, for example, like this. Many many one. The last one hundred, right? You may be tempted to think, wait, wait a minute. So many one. So when the average bias towards one, you should give more weight to one, right? And turn out that if you do it, it's not efficient. Okay, you shouldn't give weighting more nonlinear weighting, right? Give more weight even they appear a lot of time, right? Even though you have 101 and that's one, 100, right? Then you should still, uh, I don't do the proof, but you can skip the proof, but because it requires some math, but it does mean sample mean is an efficient estimator. If you use other weighted mean, not good. Say you use uh, weighted mean or uh, even geometric or harmonic mean, usually it's not good enough. Okay, but we're not going to do the proof here. But actually, it does suggest efficiency is an uh, is a good thing, okay? And sample mean satisfy this property, okay? And last one, it's a little bit technical, but I want to introduce here because uh, uh, you often hear that if you go further, okay? Uh, the technical definition is very complicated, but the idea is very simple. It's just law of large number idea, right? Just saying that, the more sample, the more sample you have, the estimator eventually get what you want. And there's no more uncertainty there. The variance collapse. Okay. So remember the sample mean, right? When you get more and more, 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 more sample, it will be, there's no very little variation, it's just collapse to the mean. Okay. So we this is very good, right? Because there's hope if we hypothetically increase the sample size to very, very large, you get it, okay? There's no uncertainty, no probability. Of course, when that goes to infinity, there's still some probability, but in generically means it's like, that's there, right? You get what we want, the sample size as large as possible. So it's very desirable, okay? And um, the sample mean definitely satisfy this, right? Because law of large number, okay? So that's why this free property uh, is the thing that we uh, try to get so the first, I think I have emphasized, uh, this is correct, okay? Um, I, this will be fine, right? Sample mean. And the second is sample variance, and I said i not going to prove, but uh, we can check uh, a claim. This sample mean, sorry, sample variance is actually the expected, is actually equal to the population variance, okay? So that's the reason why we use it. And the proof actually go for three slides, but I guess no one wants me to read line by line. So if you want, you can read. If you uh, have a problem, you can ask TA. I guess he will be able to help you. Uh, it's not complicated anyway. I think I make every step very clear, very slowly. So it uh, shouldn't be an issue if you really want to read it. And those who are going to QFN or want to do further, I uh, should read that. Okay. Um, So the next one we want to go over is what we call binary data. So you may say, okay, that is similar to what we have, right? Everything what we learn, the sample means, sample means apply. Yes, that apply. But uh, we can get more precise because remember sample in the proportion binary data, uh, mean and variance are closely related, right? Because mean is pi and the variance is pi times one minus pi. So the first thing uh, actually directly follow from the proportion, so the so sample mean, the sample proportion is the sample proportion, right? The sample mean, right? There's nothing new there. Right? Just to remind you what sample proportion here, binary data is zero or one, right? So example, the quite the leading example I have often said is, what is the percentage of female in the undergraduate student in Switch K, right? I think it's like, 68 to 69 percent or 70 percent in search k right and if i want to estimate this right i mean of course i can ask the school to give me but suppose i don't and say uh if i don't right and what you don't do is basically you try to collect data ask go to the subway station before station or even the library right try to collect ask people okay what is your gender okay 
and you tell me male or female, okay? And I, if I female, I maybe one male is zero, okay? And sample proportion is, right? It's a percentage of that, right? If I have 10 subjects I met, and out of that seven of them is female, I have seven, one, and 10, three, zero, right? Yes. Oh, it's the population proportion. Oh, yeah. Yeah, very good. Uh, population. Okay. And thanks for pointing this out. So, uh, because sample mean is the uh, estimator for population mean, right? So, but now we have everything be from proportion to mean. So that's, that's what I mean. Is that clear? Is that okay? Um, and then in that sample, right, I have 10 students I met, all of that seven are women, right? And that means that I have seven, one, and three, zero, right? The sample proportion will be seven over 10, which is 0.3, okay? So that would be the idea. And this is a good estimator because I'm biased, right? Because everything follows from the sample mean, right? Things change from zero, one doesn't change anything, right? Because when the sample mean, we don't any, have no restriction on the zero and one, okay? So here is a thing that we need to put emphasis on. It's uh, because of the binary data, right? We know the uh, population variant is pi over one minus pi. And so actually there are two ways to estimate this, okay? Because pi is estimated by P, okay? We can just simply put there, right? There's a good estimator, right? You might think, uh, yes or no. Um, this is a valid estimator, okay? But is it good enough, right? Because you can imagine, remember, uh, this is different from uh, the case we have non-binary data, right? You should think about n and minus one thing, right? Why don't we adjust this guy? Okay, you may ask, uh, why don't I adjust this guy? Calculate the standard way, right? We will have to do this, okay? N over n minus one, okay? And this unbiased, true, yes. This unbiased, okay? And the question, why don't we use this guy? in uh, all our textbook, uh, in other scenario, okay? There are two reasons that we will still use this biased version. One, first is when you talk about uh, binary data, usually n is not small, okay? And that means that n over n minus one is a very small number, not, doesn't really that matter anyway, first. Okay. Second is P times one minus P is also a very small number, right? Because P is from zero to one, right? So P times one P at most is one quarter, right? And usually it's much less than that, okay? So this one is like, even though we don't do this adjustment, it doesn't really that matter that much. So we just make our life easier. Just don't care about it. But you may ask, okay, why we don't care about this, but we care about this here, right? Why we have to do this, okay? Uh, the reason is this guy can be big. It's not zero to one quarter, right? It can be a huge number, okay? So, and then you multiply by N over N minus one, that the error can be a lot, okay? So um, that is the reason why uh, we still keep that, okay? But uh, uh, we just follow the book uh, or most introductory tests. We just use this to be estimated, okay? Uh, the reason is a little bit technical. It will involve what we call, uh, uh, this is called bias, right? And we can focus on the case, the weaker version, 
only care about when n is very big. Okay, that is called asymptotic unbiasedness. Okay, it's called large sample and un large sample and un unbiased, which means that when sample size is very large, okay, the unbiased the unbiased gone. So we don't worry too much about when the sample size is large. And the version we have there is uh, the sample variance is like this. Okay, so that's why this condition. So uh, sometimes you just simply use the n version rather than n minus one. There's no problem. Okay, so that's why you can see Excel. They allow you to have population variance and sample variance. It's because suppose you have one billion data or one million data. One million is not a lot. If you look at the platform, one million, two million, three million is not a lot number. And in that case, there's not no problem. Where you whether you use n or n minus one, don't really matter. But when you only have several hundred, or even less than hundred, then have to be a little bit more careful. But anyway, uh, you should then make a big difference to your data. But uh, I just illustrate why we have that. Okay. And that means that if I estimate in this way, okay. Uh, the sample variance of the sample proportion is just we, play, we just this guy, right? We just use p times one minus p here, okay? And take the square root, okay? And that's end of the first part. So we basically compete one thing: how to do point point estimate, okay? If you give them data, you want to guess mu, what are you gonna do? Sample mean, x bar. That's the best guess. You know why they are best. Is unbiased, efficient, consistent. Very nice property. And now you know why we do the uh, n minus one because this is unbiased. Or to improve it, it's so called consistent. Okay. Uh, and of course, it's also very. It's also efficient, but we didn't we didn't say it out. Okay. And uh, the sample proportion. There's some slight slightly twist there. The variance is not. Unbiased, but it's okay. Uh, we still use the bias version, but this is the way uh, we do for proportion. But usually, n is big enough, so uh, we don't really worry about it. But in case you are super worried, you can correct it. But usually, we don't. Okay. So I think it's time to pay break because I saw many of you are very tiring. Uh, so let's have a you reply and have some rest. After that, we talk about interval estimate after the break. So I, I appreciate if you tell me uh, what you think. Is it too fast, too slow? And uh, the question, uh, I have a break of 15 minutes. So we will resume at uh, 3.34. Three I guess.
that the guests, our guests, they probably have never know what is about the event. But it's our guests that we can take the guests and say, yes, come. Yes, come. Okay, I caught. I hope you have a good rest. Oh, I I can. I said I can understand. It's very tiring, especially when the weather changed right now. Uh, but let's see. A bit difficult. Um, uh, yes, conceptually it's a bit difficult. Uh, but I hope you understand the idea that I conveyed in the first half of the class is sample mean. And sample variance are the way that you want to estimate. I just justify, especially why sample variance is the way we propose is y n minus one, because when n, then it's that is not correct in general, uh, because you average those out, it's actually you would uh, underestimate. Okay, so you, instead of dividing by n, you have to divide n minus one, so we underestimate the uh, variance. Yeah, it's hot. Yeah, that's true. Uh, 
Yes, it's hot as well. I don't know. I, I turn on the thing. Is yeah, so cool. Not cool enough, but not about me. Okay. Um, I guess many of some of you actually don't have enough sleep for sure. But uh, just to remind you, today is Monday, not first day or Friday. So if you confuse, so make sure that now is Monday. I emphasize. I mean. There's no ambiguity, should be. There's no way, I mean, there's no time zone that is Friday, okay? So you cannot say you live in other, other place in the world that is Friday, but. Uh, that's okay, is it, is it that cloudy? I feel it's very hot, but anyway, it's okay. We can, have, we can have a disagreement over the weather, but not the day of the week. Um, the key point, yes, the estimator, yes. Estimator is useful to determine price by getting samples. Yeah, estimator, right? Um, statistics is uh, a function of the sample, okay? And if we use to estimate parameter, they call estimator. Okay? Statistic is just simply, I give a random variable, sorry, a random sample, okay? Any function of the random sample is called statistics. And if you use it to do estimate, it's called estimator, okay? And uh, yeah, point estimate, that's good. Uh, key point is no, good. That's a good one. Um, so most of you think the speed is okay, so I'm glad. I guess, uh, I hope it's not too fast uh, because today it's slightly faster than usual because uh, uh, I think this is, uh, we covered the material, yes, last week already. So you can easily follow, most of you, it's okay, I'm happy. Um, what fruit do twins love? Pears? Oh yeah, I got it. Oh yeah, that's good one. Right? I like it. Today is so hot, yeah, it's a good joke. It's hot? Yeah, I think so, yeah, that's right. No, no, ha ha. No, haha, <laughs> no, good. So at least uh, she seems, seems to be okay. And I think many of you are very tired. So we have talk, talk, talk here. So um, before the break, uh, we, we have talked about point estimate, okay? So as I promised, I will do more than that. We do interval estimate, okay? And because of the introductory nature of a class, we only talk about interval estimate for mean, okay? not about variance, okay? Sample variance, we are just happy with the point estimate. We only talk about point estimate, sorry, interval estimate for mean, okay? We want to do that, okay? So let's, let's start, okay? So the, um, I did the following, okay? So, um, by central limit theorem, okay? Sample mean actually follow approximately, when n is large, a bell curve, okay? which is we have learned last time, okay? So, uh, that can help us to guess what happened, uh, when we try to, instead of talking about point estimate, we talk about interval estimate, okay? So that would be the key. So this is the key thing that behind what we're gonna do, okay? So I did the following. Here's the key, key slide is, we want to start from the point estimate, x bar, we know it's good, okay? We want to go left and right, okay, symmetrically, so that we have one minus alpha, alpha is very small, okay? Alpha is like 0 0.1, 0 0.05, or 0 0.01, okay? That means I want 90%, 95%, or 99%, or chance that include me, okay? So let me repeat the statement. We want to look at the sample mean mu, sorry, sample, sample mean x bar, okay? We want it to have high probability to include the mu. Is that clear? 
okay? We want to have an interval that include the mu, okay? How do we do that, okay? And that looks like an impossible thing to do because we never know what happened. Uh, it's going to be the mu. We, we don't know where the mu is, right? But anyway, so let's get started by a picture. Then hopefully that will convince you that what we are doing is reasonable, okay? So central limit theorem tells the following. X bar follow a bell curve, right? The bell curve. And this bell will be centered at the, the bar will be centered at uh, mu, okay? And the variance of this, right? Variance of this, right? Is simply sigma square over n, right? And now we suppose we know this guy sigma square, okay? To make our life easier, we know this, okay? Someone tell you this. I mean, we don't care who tell you, but we know this guy first, okay? We know this guy. The question is, I want my x bar, okay? X bar can anything from the bell, right? So the question is, how do we find an interval, okay? Starting from the x bar you have to include mu, okay? Now the question is, suppose you get this, this is data you get, right? How you go left and right, that's called the interval, right? The M, that's what we call M, right? Go left and right by M, right? That means that we'll have X bar plus M, X bar minus M, right? So we have an X bar. We want to go left by M, right by M, in the way that we have high probability to include mu, okay? Remember, mu is not random variable, okay? Mu is a fixed number, which we just don't know, okay? The only the random variable here is x bar, okay? Just to remind you, it's the random variable x bar, not the mu, okay? There's nothing probabilistic about mu. Only thing is probabilistic is x bar, okay? So how can we make sure that uh, this would happen? Looks like a very difficult concept, okay? But, uh, but okay, what we know is the following, okay? We can think it in a reverse way, okay? Look at the following. How likely the X bar is going to be? If we know mu, suppose you know mu, okay? That means that we can see, okay? How likely X bar fall within this one? Okay. We know that how to calculate this number. Okay. Suppose I want this area is one minus alpha. Okay. I want this alpha. That means that this guy and this guy is alpha over two symmetrically, right? Because Middle is minus alpha, both sides must be add up to alpha, equally alpha over two, okay? And that is what? This number is mu, okay? Plus uh, sig over root n, and this number we call z alpha over two, okay? And this number is simply you read from the norm as this, right? And you have uh, one minus alpha over two, true. Just looking at um, the Z table, right? Because the right hand side is alpha over two, right? The everything on the left is one minus alpha over two. Is that clear? So, and this guy, right, is mu minus okay? You can see if I go left and right by this, right? This would say one minus alpha probability, x bar will fall within that. Okay, let me repeat the statement. So this is the number 
that give us if I know mu, I extend left and right by this number, okay? And large probability, the x bar will fall within it, okay? Now, we have what we call, I don't know, maybe what we call, uh, I touch you and you touch me, okay? The principle of, because the will is, I, if I can touch you, okay? Okay, and actually you can touch me if the same distance, okay? So if I construct from mu, construct this, have large probability include this, the same idea, if I go, I call this M, then X bar will have large probability include mu. Let me repeat the statement. It's a little bit convoluted, okay? I don't know X bar, okay? X bar would be, okay? You go left and right by this M, right? Large probability X bar will fall within that, right? So reversely, if I have X bar, okay? I extend and write by M, okay? I would also have high probability include mu because the probability you touch me, same as I touch you, same as you touch me, right? Is that clear? So of course there's a math behind, but that is the main idea is like this. Okay, you can look at the math, but the idea is very simple, right? High probability, X bar is within M distance of mu, right? And you think about other way around, X bar, M distance, you include mu, the same thing, right? Because I include you, and from the other perspective, you include me, the same thing, right? Look at octopus, right? If octopus touch the other animal, right? You cut the octopus hand and put other animal, the same thing. I mean, I don't know whether you you get the idea. It means, right? If A touch B, right? You put a hand there, right? You can probably touch this guy, but you, you can also put the hand on the B, the same, right? The same idea, right? Because I touch you, the same as you touch me. I don't know whether, whether it's clear or not, but I mean, anyway, it's a math. So I, I mean, but I try to, Give intuition for that, okay? So that's exa exactly what it means, okay? So that is the formula. We will be, you will need this one. If, I would say if you uh, forget what's going on in this class, this is the only formula that you have to remember, okay? This is the only formula that I expect you to get out of this class, okay? It's how to do interval estimate for a sample mean, it just plus minus Z, Z R over two, uh, uh, sigma over root N, okay? Just go back to the table, probably you would want to uh, ask me how to figure that out, okay? Uh, maybe I just go back to the Z table. I think the Z table is not here, but Z table is like uh, topic three. So you ask, uh, uh, the set table is here. Where's my set table? Yeah, here, okay. Okay, suppose I'm asking alpha, alpha is um, 5%, okay, 5%. One minus alpha is 95, okay? Alpha is 5%. And alpha of two is 0.025, okay? So the right-hand side is 0.025. So the left-hand side is 0.975, okay? Maybe I just draw it in case I'm too abstract here. So I want it to be here, the middle is 0.95, okay? That means that this is 0 0.025 and this is 0 0.025, right? And that means that this guy is 0 0.975, okay? I want to read this guy is 
on 0 to 5. Okay. I don't know why, but um, the standard notation is Z is looking at the tail area. Okay. This point Z, this is the tail area. Z R over looking at the tail area. Okay. It's exactly opposite to F, right? Big F is looking at the left area. Okay. The Z, this is the right area. You ask me what? I don't know. This is the standard notation. So, and this is looking at this one for 975. Look at the number. Okay. So, how do we do that? Okay. Go back to here. Remember, we read this and go back to the uh, number. Okay. For 975, it's here. This number. Okay. So, it's 1.96. Okay. And don't worry, this number, you often use it. Okay. And in practice, some people just use two because you just basically add two SD. Okay, the standard thing usually rule of thumb with do two SD. Right? If 95%, then you will be this one, right? And if 90%, uh, that would be like somewhere here. 1.645, right? And if uh, 99, then you will be somewhere area. But anyway, this is the way we do. Okay, of, of course, you can do norm dot s dot this and put 0.975 and true and they're done. Okay, just to remind you because look a little bit abstract, I just go to Excel in case you would, you ask me because I would expect you to know how to do it, but in case, but you forgot, that we will do is norm dot s dot this okay for nine seven five okay because this is the standard normal and the true and that's it okay and dot s means standard normal so I don't need to put the uh, zero and one okay? because if you don't like this you can think about norm dot this you can put a uh, sorry inward okay it's inward ah, I said I should make sure okay and I can do the norm dot inward then I guess uh, I can put a uh, zero and one the same thing but uh this table, right? You read from the area to the number is the inverse. Okay? Is that clear what we're doing? We look at the area, we ask what is the number down there, we refer to the area. So the rule, although it looks uh, terrible, but the idea is very simple, right? Basically, just like from a sample mean, okay? Just plus minus in general, two standard deviation of the, sam the standard variation for the uh, sample mean, right? Just go to SE, right? Because remember, this is the standard deviation for the sample mean, right? So you just go to standard deviation, okay? And just terminology here, I just go very fast because uh, here, this guy is called marginal error. Okay. Right. Basically, it's just, right. X bar is here. You go this by 1me x bar plus me. And you go left hand side x bar minus me. Right. And this is called the width. Okay. That's two times me. Right. And the highest guy is called the UCL lower upper confidence limit this is the lower confidence limit so there's nothing nothing deep here but i just terminology of course the most important is this formula but as i said you'll be doing this all the time so you won't forget it's hard to forget this one okay you do the assignment anyway okay any question so this is the formula remember 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 I hope. Let's go to example, then make sure that uh, you understand I'm not going to prove, but uh, let's see the example. Okay. 
this example is important because uh, uh, that's either say everything we want to say. Okay. So we have uh, population standard division is four. Okay. You ask how we get this one. Uh, we will talk about this immediately when we don't have this guy. Okay. Suppose we know this one. And how we get this one, there's many ways to get this one, uh, but we don't forget. We've, at the moment, we just think we know. Okay. And we collect data. N is 64. Okay. And sample mean is three. Okay. First, from what we learned before the break, if I want to guess what is the meal, okay, the best guess we have is just free. Okay. If you ask, okay, as I said, right? Elon Musk asks you what is the how much people want to pay for your for the phone? Just the sample mean. That's the answer. Okay. But probably you want to give him how good is the number, right? Just give the number is not good enough. Okay. So probably you want to give a range and that highly likely include what we want. Right? So that's the idea. At the end, turn out to be between two and two and four somewhere. Okay. So let's do the math. But remember this is the formula, and that is the formula that you remember. Okay. So this is the formula. I hope you remember. Okay, by heart. Okay, of course you can write down in your cheat sheet. Um, so this guy is the center, right? It is the sample mean. Okay, you go left and right, and this guy just four, right? And this guy sixty four here, right? And we want ninety five percent, which we look at already. 95% is 1.96, right? This guy, right? 1.96. Remember the max cell formula? Norm S inward 1.96. And that's the answer. So 1.96 is 0.975. Okay. And you get 1.96, then you plug in, that's a formula, right? So turn out the margin error is 1 or 0.98, which is 3 or plus minus 1. Right? So that is, you, the Elon Musk asks you, okay, what is our guess? 3, okay? And plus minus 1, right? So we're highly likely that it's between these two numbers, right? between 2 and 4. Is that clear how how you do it? Okay. So, yes. Okay. Very good question. So before we do it, there's ninety five percent probability what we do will include mu. Okay. But the very good question is why I have confidence interval? Because of once you do it, there's no probability. Once you do it. It's a number. There's no probability anymore. So then you can't, you can't say probability. So that's why we call, we call confidence. We cannot say 95% percentage interval. There's a probability before you did, do this process. After you do it, there's no more probability. So that's why we cannot do probability. So we a good question. How can we interpret this confidence interval? Okay. And I think this is a very good question. Actually, this is a emphasized in many textbook. Okay. I just give you the idea. The idea is the following. Okay. This is the, the graph that illustrates what you're asking. It means that suppose you do 100 sample, you have 100 confidence interval. Okay. And 95 of them will include the true meal. Five of them don't, but you don't know which five. You don't know which 95. So we only have confidence because we only do once. So that's been 95% confidence, okay? There's no probability. It just simply mean we believe in this procedure if we are to repeat 9500 times, 95 of them will include. We don't know the one we found exactly in cool or not. So that is the confidence comes from. Okay, so very good question. Uh, I hope I answered that. Uh, but it's a very tricky question.
Okay. And usually you look, you took that class, they would make this a big question of that, but I'm, I think I'm generous. I'm not asking that. So I hope this is, I mean, I'm very tricky. So that's why I, uh, that's why I elaborate what I said here. Okay. Because, uh, before you do the sampling, this is a random variable, the common variable. And then you can say properly include the mu. But once you do it, you can't. So we, we only can say confidence. So that is a tricky part here. So make sure that you understand what is property, what's not. Okay. Remember, mu is never a random variable. The random variable is your x bar. Okay? Plus minus that guy is also a random variable as well. All right. So just to remind you again, this is an estimator. Okay, because it depends on x bar you draw, All right? And the cal the number you calculate is the uh, the interval. Okay, it's estimate. Okay, it's a interval estimate. Okay, and it might or may not include the mu. We don't know. Okay, but we believe that if we repeat this hundred times, ninety five of them will include, although we don't know which one. Okay. Very good question because I think I spent uh, a lot of time to understand this when I was a student. But of course, now I understand what's going on, but uh, it shouldn't be that difficult. Okay. Last, last one we want to talk about is what we call unknown variance. The, you would say this is not very difficult. Okay. The idea is the following If we don't know this guy, we know this guy, right? Instead, there's actually the case that we all the time we only know this as star not sigma square and we have to replace it by s okay and we know this is going to be t and minus one right so here the question would be hey um so what can we do all right and same thing right the interval estimate will be just the same right the only difference here is T and this S. Okay, remember before this is sigma square, right? Sigma, this is Z. Okay, and the formula we use right before is norm S inward, right? And put the number there, right? One minus alpha over two, right? Here we have T inward. Again, one minus alpha over two, but only different is we will have um, to specify the degree of freedom m minus one, and that's it. Okay, so that's the only difference we got. Okay, don't worry, I'm going to example that illustrate how I do it. Okay, and some of you a little bit uh, uneasy. Okay, let me just remember remind you what we are doing. If we know, if we know the sigma square, okay, we exactly know mu, and this is very nice, okay, this is very nice. But if we don't know sigma square, what we have is we have to go to t n minus one. This is also a bell curve, but a much higher bell. It means zero, right? How do you transform this? Is this minus mu over s over root n, right? And this guy follow t okay so that's why the same idea right we're looking at here right one minus alpha the same thing we look at here one minus alpha okay. there's no difference between this and that right same thing okay so everything would uh, go to the same right remember we know this actually we go to this one right we go to z right the same thing but now instead go to z we go to T. Is that clear? Is that okay? Right, because you can see the procedure the same. Okay? The proof is the same, but that's why I don't want to bother with that. So I'm pretty sure that many of you would feel uncomfortable because it's not very concrete. So let me show the example. Then you will feel more, much more happier. Okay? So this is example. Uh, continue the last one. So. Now, remember when we have a bell uh, 
to make sure t would work, we have to assume underlying is a del. Okay, without making the assumption, we cannot do t. Okay, and here we have sample mean is three out of uh, twenty, okay. and the variance is twelve. Okay, so immediately without doing anything, if someone asks you what's a point estimate, this is the one. Okay. It's the best guess you would do, okay? And what we want is, okay, can we do more? Can we do interval estimate, okay? And the thing is, we don't know sigma square, okay? We don't know that. Then we do rely on S and normality, okay? And the formula is this, right? If you still recall, X bar plus minus go up and down by T N minus one, alpha over two, and so over root N. So that's, is the natural formula that just come out of your mind okay even though i'm old i can remember that so you are young you should be able to remember that if not at least you write down on your paper okay when you go to exam so x bar we know right nothing new right and n we also know that there's nothing new there right and S also we did it, right? So what is left this guy, right? So which is N is, right? So we just T inward upon 975 and uh, 19, okay? Then let me explain again what is upon 975. I guess we can have, we have time to explain again, right? Remember what is upon 975 because we want things in the middle is 0.95, okay? And 95 in the middle, five on both ends. And five on both ends, both are symmetric. So 2.5 at two ends, right? 2.5 both ends means this is 0.025. And this is 0.025, okay? And that means that from this point, go to the left hand side, is what? Pawn 975. Let's come from this guy. Okay. I would show you the Excel. This is actually 2.09 after I talk about finish, talk about that. But you can see uh, once you put in all the number, okay, this is the data you have, right? Um, it's much bigger. The marginal error is like almost like 5.6, right? So this is what your guess is, okay? And probably uh, if that's the case, you should collect more data right, to reduce the sample variance, right? Because you can see uh, this is inversely related to N, right? If you're able to collect more data, likely this N would shrink and the marginal error reduce, right? Looks likely the S may not reduce or not depends, right? But at least N will get bigger. Let's hope that you can string this guy, okay? So you can imagine, even though we're looking, right? If n go to infinity, right? This will string to very small, so you will be happy. Okay. So let me go to the Excel and show you this inward 0.95, okay? And that's we will end today's uh, lecture, okay? So it will be just t y t dot inverse okay for 975 i think what's n 19 20 and the minus one right 19 so it's 2.09 okay so that is how we get this guy oh maybe i sorry i should talk about one thing before I end this because i want to talk about t table that we see last time just one more one more slide sorry uh, sorry for keeping you very quickly i will end this so if you remember, the slide we have is like this. Is the table is we have actually is the middle area, right? So that is exactly why we learned this. I put a table here is the middle area. So when we said one minus alpha is 95, that means that I read this column, 5%, right? So it's this number because n minus one right it's 19 
okay, 19 one. And uh, alpha, right? I look at 95%, right? So exactly this is the number, okay? Is that okay? So I guess I should end here because I usually I overrun by one or two minutes. So I end one or two minutes earlier today. So I will see you on first day. Bye-bye.